Good evening, black people and all allies fighting for black liberation, black prosperity, and black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announced today that the Senate will vote next Wednesday on a new voting rights bill backed by Senators Amy Klobuchar and Joe Manchin. The Freedom to Vote Act includes provisions that would expand voting access, like automatic and online voter registration, making Election Day a national holiday, uniform early voting, and restoring the voting rights of those who've done time in fel for felony convictions. The bill also bans partisan gerrymandering and institutes a number of campaign finance reforms. It includes an election integrity section as well, which bolsters cybersecurity for voting machines and establishes protections against partisan election subversion. Now, this is the second time around trying to pass voting rights legislation through the Senate. The key difference with this legislation is that it is written in part by Senator Joe Manchin, who rejected an earlier, broader version of the bill. Manchin has been trying to rally Republican support for his new bill in order to overcome the filibuster's 60-vote threshold. But as of today, those votes are nowhere to be found. Next week, we'll show whether or not the only way Democrats can pass legislation that protects voting rights, particularly the voting rights of black Americans, is to reform or kill the filibuster, a move that Manchin still shows no signs of agreeing to. Joining me now to discuss is Ezra Levin, co-founder of Indivisible, and Niambi Carter, associate professor of political science at Howard University. So Ezra, we're going to get a vote on this thing. Uh, how do you expect all of this to shake out? Well, slight corrective, Charles. I wish I could tell you we're going to get a vote on this thing. Actually, we're going to get a vote on whether we should get a vote on this thing. We're going to get a vote on should there be a debate about the status of our democracy and whether this bill should actually get a vote. Because what is going to happen next week is the Senate Democrats, who are fully aligned behind this bill, all 50 of them, they are going to say, hey, we would like to discuss this this bill. We want to hear your ideas, Republicans. Tell us what you want to talk about. We're interested. And Mitch McConnell will stand up with the full support of his caucus, and they will filibuster that. They will filibuster it. So there will be no vote on the bill itself. There will be a vote on whether to debate the vote, and Mitch McConnell will prevent that ultimate up or down vote on the bill from happening. So I think what you just described is exactly right. The question will be called. The question will be called, do we want to protect our democracy or do we want to protect the filibuster? That is going to be the question. Now, I do not expect a showdown on the filibuster next week, but I think that will make the case clear. And then we could see a showdown on the filibuster in the coming weeks. So, Naomi, if we get to a showdown on the filibuster, you know, Manchin has his name attached to this bill. This is his baby. If the Republicans will not let it proceed to a vote, will he feel pressure to then reform or get rid of the filibuster altogether, something he has insisted that he is not going to do? Absolutely. I mean, I think this was a smart move into parts of Democrats to take one of their most sort of recalcitrant or stubborn members who's been very opposed to ending the filibuster and putting him in charge of this effort. I mean, he wouldn't be spending all of this time putting this bill together, having these conversations with the Republican members, if he didn't think this thing could be passed, or at least he would be willing or unwilling, I guess, um, to, to seek reform. And I think he's shown that he's not necessarily immovable on reforming the filibuster. He doesn't want to get rid of it. That he's very clear about. But I think he would actually seek to reform the filibuster the way they did in 2017 with Supreme Court nominees and made them essentially filibuster proof. They could do the same thing with voting rights legislation. And I think putting Joe Manchin in charge of this effort really holds his feet to the fire since he, along with Kirsten Sinema, have been stalwart against reforming the filibuster. But even someone like Joe Biden, who is pretty traditional as a legislator, is even thinking about um, changing the filibuster rules. And so I think um, Joe Manchin will indeed want to 
make his efforts worth something and show himself of value to the Democratic Party on this particular issue. So Ezra, Niambi's uh, explanation of that is eloquent and speaks to the logical half of my brain. There is a skeptical <laughs> half of my brain, though, that is still out there saying, you know, is this guy just do, going through the motions here to say, I tried, right? This is, I tried, I put it forward, I put my name on it, they just wouldn't do it, and I don't want to change the filibuster rules because I don't want to break the Senate. You know, where, where, which side of the brain are you on with this, Ezra? Look, I'm with Dr. Carter here. I think there's a real pathway to victory. And I I don't think it does us any good just to be pessimist about it and throw in the towel. I'm not saying victory's in the bag, but why would Joe Manchin spend all this time, all these many months, going back and forth with negotiations on what should the bill look like? What should be included? Can we wrangle everybody else around it? We've now gotten to this point. And look, there was a, a leak uh, at, a, at an event that he spoke at months ago where he was talking to his allies and his donors, and he explicitly said that he was in favor of some form of filibuster reform. Now, is, is that going to be his position when we actually have the showdown on the filibuster? I can't guarantee you that. But what I can say is if we all do our part and we put overwhelming pressure on Congress and we make it important, necessary, undeniable that the filibuster has to go, that is going to make it easier for Joe Manchin and Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to come together and make a deal in that moment. So this isn't only in Joe Manchin's hands. We're not just people on the sidelines watching a game. Democracy is a participatory sport, and it's important for all of us who are watching this to say, hey, Senator, I know you're with us on democracy. You got to go out and make sure that you're with us on filibuster. You got to tell President Biden that he's got to be with us on filibuster. You've got to spend your time in the cloakroom with Joe Manchin and say, hey, you got to get with us on filibuster because my constituents are yelling at me. We all have a part to play. This is not just something we're watching happen in front of us. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we're talking about us putting overwhelming pressure on these guys in Washington, but, you know, but what about the president and the, the White House and the overwhelming pressure that they could bring to bear, which in some cases may be even more consequential than, than the general public. Why do you believe that the, the White House has not just leaned in on this issue? Is this part of their strategy? Just do it behind the scenes and, and uh, let the wills, you know, put, you, be strategic and put Manson in charge of it so he'll defend it? Look, I think you're absolutely well, I mean, right. I think the part of the Go ahead, Doctor. I'm oh, sorry. I, I think you're. I think you're right. I mean, I think part of this is. I mean, about Joe Biden, he thinks like a legislator, not like a president. I mean, this is one thing that he has sort of been reluctant to really go all in on and really spend the political capital needed to push uh, Congress toward this direction. Um, but I do think Ezra is right that this is a both and proposition, right? That we need both the White House using their sort of bully pulpit to push this issue forward and keep it in the public's mind. And we know that these people are coming up, some of them in midterm elections, right, for re-election. We know that some of these others will be coming up very shortly, that we have to hold their feet to the fire because in a lot of ways, these people are closer to us than the president ever will be. And when we're talking about things like voting, we're talking about something that happens at the local level, at the state level. And so that is a really appropriate place to put that pressure. But it's an all hands on deck kind of situation here. And no singular sort of strategy is going to get us what we want at the end, which is a more robust protection of voting rights for the most of us. And I think Democrats also know that these bills and these laws are really going to hurt their voters at the end of the day. So they need to do something really proactive here if they hope to stand a chance in the subsequent elections after this. Ezra, you know, just speaking in purely political terms, Republicans have laid off of Joe Manchin and in some ways kind of protected him and held him up because he has, been, has not been willing to get rid of the filibuster. What happens if he should say that he's willing to alter it to protect voting rights in a state that went overwhelmingly for Donald Trump? What is going to be the Republican strategy of attack on Joe Manchin in that case? 
Look, Joe Manchin was up for re-election in 2018, won re-election in 2018, even though Mitch McConnell did everything he possibly could to defeat Joe Manchin. You know what's going to happen if Joe Manchin runs again in 2024? I'll tell you, it doesn't matter what vote he takes. It doesn't matter what favors he does for Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell is going to do everything in his power to defeat Joe Manchin. So there isn't going to be any extra consequence from the Republican side of the aisle if Joe Manchin casts a vote to save American democracy. What's going to happen is that young people, brown and black people, indigenous people in West Virginia, they're going to have an easier time actually voting and exercising their rights. And that's going to help Joe Manchin. And he is going to have parades in the streets across the country because he stood up and actually acted at a time of crisis. So I really just do not buy that Joe Manchin is thinking, uh, I can't do this because what are the Republicans going to do? That's baked into his future. The only question in front of us right now is, does he rise to the occasion? Is this the, man the moment in history where Joe Manchin takes that really important step forward for our democracy? And I can't say he's going to. But I can say that we all have a role right now in making that step as easy as possible for him to take. That's why if you've got a Democratic representative, they should be out there talking about not just how they support this bill, not even just how they support filibuster reform, but asking Joe Biden publicly, hey, Joe, where are you? Are you going to back us up in this fight to reform the filibuster? Every Democratic politician should be on the record asking mm -hmm. the president to Ezra Levine and Neon B. Carter, you guys are pulling me over to optimism. Ezra just promised me there are going to be parades in the street, so I'm going to hold him to that. Absolutely. Thank you both for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it.